Holy smokes, that bass sweep is killing the door. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? EXO coming at you here, bronzing for some bronzing, jonesing for some bass out in the shop today. That's right, time to add some bump out here. I can't take another day working without it. The place is huge after all, so I think a couple two-channel towers on both ends should be plenty loud for now. There's only one problem though, the best speakers for the job are technically not working anymore. Well, at least one of them, and it was really sudden, but it, it doesn't surprise me at all. You see, I have a really bad habit of buying broken stuff on Craigslist because, get this, Half the time, it's not even broken, seriously. More often than not, the people on these ads are just throwing away good gear because of a blown fuse or a frayed wire somewhere inside. To me, that is just the biggest shame. So literally, in this case, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So in today's video, we'll diagnose the problem, hopefully find a way to fix it, dang tweeters, and then see how she sounds all put back together. Let's get some bass in here. Alrighty, got her wired up to our mini two channel. Nice little home audio amp that we covered a couple years ago. Class D, 80 watts per channel, not too bad. So we're gonna play some bass music just to get an idea of what the paradigm sounds like with the current problem. We're not going for SQ points here, so that's why I'm just using YouTube. But uh, let's go ahead and push play and give you an idea of what she sounds like. See? Here's something missing. I mean, I know it's not sound quality music, but the subs are moving, the tweeter, you can't hear a single thing coming out of that tweeter. Whoa, hold on a minute. I think we're flexing across the freaking county. Is that for real right now? Already? Two eights? Oh yeah, listen to that. My freaking toolbox. That's freaking hilarious. The locking mechanism is already flexing and we're like three feet away from the wall. But yeah, no highs whatsoever, no crispy sound and great music. So we need to fix that. I know that it's gotta be either something with the tweeter itself, maybe it's blown, uh, or the crossover, or a missing little wire somewhere in the mix. So let's go ahead and grab our drill, take the back faceplate off, do a quick little investigation with our multimeter. There has gotta be an easy explanation for this. Well, crap, it can't be that straightforward, can it? Easy peasy, there is no continuity on the tweeter. She is gone. Not surprising, though. If you research these Monitor 9s, it's a well-documented problem that the tweeters just let loose without warning. And what sucks is Paradigm doesn't even make parts for 25-year-old V2s anymore. Plus, it doesn't help how they made the housing so custom. Look at this thing. Can't easily replace the tweeter even if you wanted to. The thing's not even a circle, so no wonder half the people in the same boat since 1997 either got rid of it or tried to sell it for cheap because they thought there was no hope. Now that I'm looking at this thing closer, there's a pretty interesting design going on here. The faceplate actually holds the diaphragm onto the motor. They're, they probably did that for a reason for anybody trying to do their own repairs, those stinkers. You can see some minor damage on the titanium dome itself. It centers on these little nipples in here inside the gap. You can tell it had a little bit of leak from the ferrofluid. That's what that orange and red liquid is. It's supposed to help cool the coil even more, but holy crap. She is not doing well. We got some delamination and some separation there at the former. You can actually see the tiny little tinsel lead just bouncing off, totally separated. That is the cause of the problem. So unfortunately, there are no available replacements for this. So we're gonna have to do something ourselves here with our spare bin. Let's go see what we got. Now 
now I can already hear all the home audio dudes making fun of my tweeters. Those are junk, not gonna match, crossover changes, blah, blah, blah. I'm not worried though. Something's better than nothing and this won't cost a penny. In fact, these suckers right here are still raved on Parts Express with dang near five stars. And they were also the first set of tweeters that I installed in my big, big towers and those things ripped. What are the chances of that? The holes lined right up, bam! Another win for the spare bin. I honestly thought this was gonna involve a whole bunch of cutting and fussing, and I was ready to sacrifice a bunch of El Cheapo tweeters just to get the job done. But now that I'm seeing the bolt pattern and how it's not blocked off underneath, I have way more interest in using even better tweeters. I wouldn't have to ruin anything. And if the time did come, Huck Glue pulls off plastic super easy. My go-to choice would be these Peerless Soft Owns on back order. They're almost perfect on paper and people really seem to love them crossed over at the same exact point as these Monitor 9s. But that's for another day. I'm still happy with this for now. Anything to get me by with some bump out in the garage. That sure was painless. Got both speakers all swapped over to the new, tw well, the old tweeters and temporary tweeters now. You know I can't resist those peerless silk domes. They're mint, but that's over two months on back order. So let's at least hear how this quick jerry rig turned out. on the amp. I went to a different place for better tweeter action. I like it. It's crispy. It sounds really crispy. Wow, right here is the sweet spot. That's nice. Let me re turn that down a little bit before we get copyright. I don't know, we're swearing on here. But um, yeah, that actually is surprisingly nice with the existing crossover. Even if it isn't perfectly matched for a temporary setup, I cannot complain. This is gonna get me by perfectly. When I was broke, they didn't even know my name. Who are you? Nah, I got it, host, think they run the game. I ain't dumb. See, you wanna cuff me when I was lame. <laughs> Move us up until the cops come. Sit aside and get the job done. Holy smokes! That bass sweep! It's killing the door! Dang! I gotta rewind that. Hold on. Look at this! Oh my word, I wonder which one is doing the worst. Those freaking roll up doors are taking a pounding. You know what? I'm gonna go through my phone and see which frequencies are the most damaging, like 40, 50 hertz. Go right through and see what flexes the most. We're at 20 hertz, let's do this. Oh, I can already hear something, where's that coming from? Hear that? Let's scroll up. 21, 22, oh yeah. I hear the garage going. I think it's these doors on the other side too. Yep. Here it is right here. Right there. That's 30 hertz. Looks like it's getting pretty pretty good in the corners. Oh. 35. A little bit of flexing. 
Oh, what's that? There's 40 hertz over here. <laughs> you can hear that. Let's go up to 45. Oh boy, my light and my uh, flashing. <laughs> Just minor vibrations, nothing damaging. Let's go to 50. Oh, now it's this light. <laughs> hear it? Now it's that light. Let's go to 55. Oh, oh, that's buzzing real good. Let's go to 60. Yeah, those lights like to hum. I'll probably add a little bit of second skin on those lights. What do you say? Deadening on the outside of a freaking building. This is crazy. Only my garage. Oh, that sounds like crap. What is it? This little hinge right here? The heck is that? Yeah, it's that. So at uh, 85 hertz, looks like this wants to vibrate. Yep. 85 hertz. I'll probably put a little bit of felt on that. So I'll, I'll push stop. This is just a nice little handy trick to diagnose uh, individual vibrations. You know what I'm saying? But when you think about it, the building already makes a whole bunch of clinking and clunking noises when the sun comes out. Thanks for your feedback in the last video, by the way. Uh, that was really helpful. I know a lot of people were just pinpointing the expansion and contraction point. Well, I know that, but I was really looking for your feedback if you were willing to accept that and what you would have done to fix it. But the general consensus is just leave it. It's gonna happen regardless, even though one guy did have that drop ceiling idea. And I do think that could help, but for the amount of money it would cost, I think I'm just gonna accept the little bit of flexing noises that I hear. It'll probably just blend right in with our subs making noise. So yeah, I'm a happy camper. Started this video down and out, not even able to use these. And now here we are, I'll be able to have all four eights pounding away in the big space in my garage. It fills it up real nice, so I'm super happy. No sense getting rid of these things, they're classics. Thanks for watching today's video. One man's trash is always another man's treasure. I encourage you to check out you know, classified listings like Marketplace and Craigslist. There's always a diamond in the rough out there for people to pick up for cheap or free. So that's just a little PSA. Thank you guys for watching and checking out uh, Showtime. If you ever wanna buy brand new stuff retail, there's always a place to go. Every little bit helps support the channel. So huge high five to all the people who are getting what they need. This is EXO signing out. I'm feeling great. I'll talk to you in the next one. Ba Boom!